I like to give you all surprises every once in a while when I have the time. Hello, Miss Jeannie. Hi, Miss Judy. The preface in the front of it says, this book is dedicated to my sisters in Christ. And when I read that, I said, okay, I have to buy this book. <laughs> My sisters in Christ all over the world who long to deepen their walk with the Lord, move into everything God has for them and become all he made them to be. So I am going to add a scripture underneath our painting. OK, and basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a color of paint. And. Let's see if y'all can see it. Yeah, y'all can see. Okay. I'm just going to take a color of paint. Mm, let's see. What's one of the colors in our painting today? Purple. Let's take a color. And I'm going to put it on my palette on the side of me. And then I'm going to take a paintbrush. And I don't know if y'all have ever done this before, but it's a lot of fun. And like I said, I used to do it a lot and then I, I stopped doing it. So there's, I'm just going to do a short one today. So I'm going to do um, this one right here. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. James 4, 8. So basically, I'm just going to take my paintbrush. This is not a good paintbrush. Hang on. Let me try another one. Or maybe it's the paint. Can y'all see? Yeah, y'all can. You're not, you're not making this. I mean, like, it's going to be hidden. But you know that underneath your painting is going to be a scripture. Draw near to God. I'm doing a short one because I'm I'm a it takes a while to, you know, write it out. But how much fun is this? And how much more meaning is there in your painting when you do something like this? And he will Hey, Angela. Hey, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. You know what I did? I already told you hi. I don't know why I'm telling. No, Facebook user, Cindy, I cannot see your name, but I know it's you. Draw near to you and this is James 4 8 okay so now we're ready to start painting I'm just not even gonna trace it all right but I do have my B you can see my B right there and we so we're gonna start on the background I'm going to use an ocean green, which is basically just like, it's almost the same color as this. If you have these paints, you can even use this. It's called aqua green, these little artist loft paints. Oh, I am starting with a very, very light blue. And I'm going to start working around this whole area. It's almost like a mint green color, but I want it to be even lighter than this. I want it to be almost like really, really pastel. I might have to do more than one layer because of the writing underneath. So
So yeah, I thought this would be fun tonight just to do a little extra painting and to let y'all know that um, I started packaging up um, a lot of items today. And I bought the cutest little um, prizes that just came in. I went ahead and ordered some things that are like that have my logo on them. And so some of y'all have some cute little prizes coming in the mail. And then some of y'all have some aprons coming in the mail. Yeah, I'm going to have to put more than one coat over this. So all I'm doing is I'm, uh, you can see how I'm holding the paintbrush. I'm just kind of moving around in like figure eights. This is white paint that is ready to be thrown away. It's, it's pretty much turned greenish brownish in the container. Um, and so I'm just using up the rest of it right now. So I'm going to try to go around this cute little V as best as I can. So you do not have to use, of course, you, I mean, you know this, you do not have to use the quote that I, the scripture that I used just now. Um, you can, of course, use anything you want, but I am going to be pulling the scriptures that are in the book and um, we're actually going to read a little bit of the book. Once I get more into the book and I, and I, I feel some things that I think are really shareable, then, um, we're gonna, we're gonna read them together and make it like a little, I guess like a little devotional or something. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I'm still trying to figure it all out. But I want to add that as a part of our membership. Okay. Yellow ochre, which is like kind of a gold. The raw umber. Actually, I should have gotten burnt umber. Grab it. And then a milky white, like a cream color. So anything around those colors will do fine. I am going to start with the yellow ochre. And I'm just going to cover uh, most of the area with that color. Okay. And I'm just using a filbert brush just for the, you know, the curves. I just want kind of like a curvy end. Let's see, how far did I go up? Right about here. I'm just going to cover this up. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I'm also expecting that we're going to have a pretty massive winter with the, with such hot weather that we've been having. I just have a feeling that winter is going to be pretty, pretty brutal on us. Yeah, we're ready for fall as well. Um, I was looking at the weather, like the weather app. And um, next week, you can already tell that things are going to start cooling off because next week our highs are in the 70s. So I was super excited about seeing that. Hello, Miss Sandra.
Okay, just covering it all up. I'm not doing anything but just covering it all up. Right there, right there. Okay, that's going to work. Let me go down just a little bit more. Now, if you don't have this color, you could just use yellow. You know, just, just a yellow with maybe a little bit of brown in it. All right, I'm going to stick to this same brush. And I'm going to put a little bit of burnt umber or raw umber, either one. Because either one is is uh, is going to be really pretty. So I'm just going to put burnt umber. So yeah. Okay, so I'm just using this same brush. And I'm just going to start making kind of like some... I don't want the curve to go like... I don't want it to be too obvious that there's a big curve. I just don't want the curve to be that much. You see what I'm saying? Like it's very, very slight. There's a very, very slight curve in it. And about every inch or so, because I'm on an 11 by 14. I'm a little bit bigger than the original one. So about every inch or so, I'm going to kind of draw a brush. Need a little bit more paint. The line... And I don't want it to be solid, so keep your paintbrush kind of mixed with the gold and the brown. And just about every inch or so, just kind of make those little loops. And then we're going to come back and fix it. This is just the first layer. Okay. So I'm just going back again and then I'm just going to kind of blend it just a little bit more into just very, very little on like the the top and the bottom of those little lines. So I'm just making it a little bit wider, each one of these lines, very, very little, keeping it really, really loose, giving it kind of like a, um, a very blended look. Okay, I'm gonna come around the, the corners and I'm kind of making, now that's a little bit too much. Kind of making it curve in just a little bit on the edges. Y'all, my paint is really, really sticky. So it's, it's very like dry brushy feel. I hardly have any paint on my paintbrush. So it's just, it's sticky because the layer of the gold is still kind of, you know, damp. And it's causing like a sticky sensation, but it's good. I like it like that. I like it like that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put this paintbrush down for just a minute. And I'm going to grab a flat brush that is about the same width that I want my little strokes to go. So we're going to make these little thingamajiggies. I have no idea what they're called. We're going to make these little thingamajiggies with the um, milky white paint. So I could see the bubble wrap working really well. You know what? We're going to have to do that in one of our new technique Wednesdays. We got to be random. So I'm going to put one right here. Okay, this was this was how I patterned this out when I did it the first time. I skipped 
I skipped a line and then I went and I put another one like kind of in the same area. And then I skipped a line and then I put another one. And then I skipped a line and I put another one. All right, then I want to scatter it. So I'm going to go to the next line and I'm going to go. This one's kind of in the middle, so I'm going to go this way. And then I'm going to skip and I'm going to go this way. And I'm going to skip and I'm going to go this way. You don't want them to be exactly straight down, so. Okay, now I'm going to change my direction. Notice how I was making those little curves to the right. Now I'm going to change my direction because now I'm going on the left side and I'm going to put one up here. And then I'm going to skip one and I'm going to put another one right here. And then I'm going to skip one and I'm going to put another one this way. Notice my little curves are going in the opposite direction now. So I'm curving into the left. Okay, and then I looked at it and I said, mm, I need a couple more. So I put another one right there. And I just kind of randomly said, let's put one right there and let's put one right there. And that should do it. Okay. And then I'm not going to get rid of this paintbrush just yet. I'm going to take that same milky white. And I'm going to mix it with just a little bit of that um, burnt umber. And I'm going to use just the top. I'm going to go straight up and down. And I'm going to use just the top of the paintbrush. And I'm going to just make some more streaks that are more on the, the, um, the lighter side. So just play with the amount of paint that you need on your paintbrush. And play around with it until you feel good about it. I'm going back with a little bit of that brown as well. Just making some areas just a little bit darker. little bit darker here and there. See how I'm making those little curves to, and what those little curves are doing is it's starting to make it look more three dimensional. So you can see that it's like actually something that's rounded. Okay, I'm gonna clean that off. And then I'm going to grab an additional paintbrush that's a little bit more of like a, a, a rounded, <coughs> excuse me, I need to drink some water. Oops. Excuse me. A little bit more like a rounded edge, um, like a, a, a round brush, basically, is what I'm saying. And I'm going to come back. And I'm going to use a little bit of this darker burnt umber. It's a little bit too much. So there's a lot of like little shading that I'm doing to make the dimension. So on the, on the little white pieces, the ones that are curved where the, they're curved to the, the opening of the parenthesis is on the left. I'm going and I'm making a little a little brown, making that little edge a little darker on the inside of the parentheses, basically is what I'm trying to say. So then the other ones, I'm going to go on the right and on the inside of the parentheses, I'm going to make those a little darker. Okay, and now this is really fun to me. We are going to you see how right now they those those little white things they just look like they pop out and they're like they're they don't look like they're weaved into the honeycomb. So we want them to look more like they're weaved into it. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to like soften the edges. Like you see right here, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. 
we're going to have to soften the edges of the top and the bottom of each one of these. And you're just, you can actually use a little bit of the gold too. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to blend them into where you have those darker brown lines, horizontal lines going across. You see how that makes a difference? All we're doing is we're just softening them up. And if you soften them up too much, then you just come back with a little bit of white on top or the milky white on top of them. See how much of a difference that makes? So I'm just going back over them. Okay, that looks better. Still not exactly where I want it, but it's better. I feel like my white is a little bit too white. That milky white is just a little bit too milky white for me. So I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna tone it down with just too much, just a little bit of this gold just in a couple of places, just to soften it up. A lot of draw brush is what I'm doing, a lot of draw brush. And I'm using a really cheap brush. It's just a, a an Artist Loft number zero round brush, okay? And I'm still not happy with it, so I'm going to play a little bit more. So I'm just adding some more of the little brown in there. I'm just trying to soften up all of those. I want it to look more curvy. So that's a little bit better. Going back with a second coat of things just to make a little highlight here and there. I love making this honeycomb. It was a lot of fun. Okay. Now, you see how my, as it's drying, you can still see some of my um, quote through it. I'm going to come back with another layer just to kind of work that in just a little bit more. Yeah, so you may not want to use the color like I did. I used like a super dark purple. You might want to make sure you use a, a lighter color if you start doing that to your paintings. I just thought it was a cool touch to add. Yeah, French manicure, that's what you call it. 
Yeah, that's my favorite is a French manicure. That's probably what I will do for the wedding. A little bit more. Okay, now this area right here needs some of that blue as well because I waited. All of this is supposed to be blue. Okay, I think that's good. All right, next step. Let's do our B. Our B is going to be, our B is going to be, I'm going to use a yellow. I'm going to use a brighter yellow. I don't want to use that, um, that really dark gold, but I am going to, um, oh, let's do the black first. Black, 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 here you are. Nope, there you are. Okay, let me get my black going. Um, I want to, I want to do the black first and then we'll come back and do like a, we're going to do like a glaze for the wings. But we're going to have to cover up this purple. Okay. You know what? I should do this. I should do the whole dome because they're going to be see-through. So. They're going to be transparent. The wings are kind of transparent. So I should have just covered all of this up anyway. All right. Now I'm ready. Most of that's going to be covered up, so I'm not real worried about what it looks like right now. Let's make some stripes. And I think on the template I gave you the stripes, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so I'm going to have about right here. About right there, I'm going to have black. So all of this is going to be black. This paintbrush holds no paint, none whatsoever. That's because it's a really cheap paintbrush. So the paint just kind of sits on the outside of the bristles and doesn't get absorbed into the bristles. And that's one of those things that you find happens with your, um, you know, like your student grade stuff. But it, you can still work it. It still works. It's just a little more difficult to work through. Let me get a better paintbrush. I don't have patience for that. Okay, let's try this little filbert. It might work better. I have um, a bottle of there's three there's three layers. There's three layers. There's the bottom layer of clear gel. And then there's the paint, the paint, the color layer. And then there is the, um, the final layer, which is another clear layer. And I have all of that in little, in little paintbrush bottles, uh, nail polish bottles, not paintbrush bottles. <laughs> 
Um, all of that in little little bottles. So yeah, I have to send that to y'all. I will share it in the group. And I definitely have enough to change, you know, change. Now, how am I going to get this off? I haven't dealt with that yet because it does not come with a remover. I have a feeling the remover is going to have to be purchased separately. Because you know how that stuff gets. I don't know if it's going to be hard to remove or not. It's not fake nails. It's real nails. It's my real nails with just the layers, the gel layers on top. Okay, so I'm using a bright yellow, but I also toned it down a little bit with a little bit of that um, yellow ochre. And I'm just filling in those parts of the bee. And then we're going to spruce it up a little bit in just a minute. But right now we're just kind of doing the coloring in, you know. All right, I have another layer here. And then let me go back to the black. All right, I like it so far. Let me get these legs going. I need a small paintbrush. This that's what you need to tell him because I was I've been asked to paint things that I didn't think I would be able to do. And when I did, you know, like commission pieces, and I was like, oh my gosh, let me. Let me just try and then I'll let you know if yes or no, if I'm going to take the commission. But I'm just going to let me just play around and see if I can do it first. And then. Um, and then I would do it and I was like, oh, wow, I can't believe I did it. So. So, yeah. Put the pure acetone on cotton and cover it for 10 minutes. Okay, I can do that. So far, I don't want to get, I don't want to take it off right now, though, so I'm not really worried about it. Now, there, I've had the nails done before that were like those fake nails. Oh, my goodness, that hurts so bad to, um, to try to get off. You know, when you, when you, when you don't go to the nail salon every two weeks, which I don't. I only get my nails done for special occasions. Otherwise, you just see me with no nail polish or anything. And pr I'm probably biting my nails. So, um, yeah, when you don't go to the nail salon on a regular basis and you get fake nails and then you let them kind of fall off by themselves. That's so painful. <laughs> when I wore gel. All right, let's see what I'm doing here. I'm just making these little legs. Now, if you want to use the template, the template has it all drawn out for you, but I'm trying to make these without the template because I covered them all up. And so notice like the little ends right here. They like, they go, they flare out. They don't flare in. 
and I had a bad habit of trying to make them flare in earlier. Okay, this doesn't look right. Goodness, this one's sticking out of his neck. What did I do? Oh, let's just make this one go higher. There we go. Okay, and then this one's going to come down. It doesn't look right because he doesn't have um, the wings yet. Okay. Step one is done. I am going to use a filbert brush. Let me see if I have a pretty decent one. I think this one will be decent enough. It's pretty worn out. But I'm going to use a filbert brush and I'm going to use some glaze medium. Okay. Remember I, we did a little glazing um tutorial i'm going to use some glaze medium and i'm going to use the yellow ochre and i'm just going to make my wings have a very okay see that's not enough glaze i'm going to make my wings Have almost like a transparent look to them. And I have a little bit too much glaze. So I'm going to take my paper towel. I'm going to take some off. I mean, I have a little bit too much paint is what I meant. And I'm going to make my yellow ochre. I'm going to add a little, little, little bit of white to give it a little bit more of a, um, a lighter yellow ochre so that it's not um, hiding behind the... Um, You know what I'm talking about. So I added just a little bit of white with the glaze. And then now it makes it kind of like a little, a little bit of a different color, not the, um, the yellow ochre by itself. So it gave it a lighter yellow ochre basically is what I'm doing. So it's yellow ochre and white and glaze medium. That's what I'm using. And so it gives it a really transparent look. And then it's really going to pop when we add our little, our little veins and stuff through the wings. I need to stand up. Okay. Let's go a little bit over right here. And a little bit over right here. And I think that'll bring it together better. Okay, continue with the glaze medium. Everybody okay, by the way? So the glaze helps with transparency. Yes, the glaze does help with transparency. That's exactly what I was going for. I've tried to get my husband to paint. He won't. <laughs> I know I have one the same exact way. <laughs> okay, so um, keep the glaze medium on your paintbrush and go into these little areas right in here with that yellow and just kind of soften up these little areas where the gold and the black meet up.
and you'll start seeing it. It almost starts looking like some of the hairs, you know? And we're going to do that same thing with the black too. Go up here and do it as well. Okay, and I'm going to add another layer of yellow because I'm trying to hide those words. Y'all see them right there? There we go. Okay, that's starting to look better. I'm liking him. Let's put that away for a minute. And let's grab, you have two choices here. And I tried both the first time I did it. You can use a really skinny liner brush. Now, I don't know where mine is. I know I just bought a brand new one. Oh, there it is. You can use a really skinny liner brush, probably even smaller than this if you want. Make your paint go into the black and make your paint almost like an ink consistency. Okay, and just, I'm kind of like rolling my paintbrush around so that it stays really, you know, the tip of it. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make these little whiskers, antennas, right there. And then I'm gonna make my little legs come out. There's one on this side, so it's kind of, let me make that a little bit. I'm even going to use it to kind of outline the B on the edges. But let me show you another option. Just like a, a paint marker. If you want to use a paint marker, you can use a paint marker. I have no idea what this is. Um, I bought this at Hobby Lobby in the paint marker area. It's just kind of like a, a small tip black paint marker. So you can use that. The only thing you have to watch out with when you use like paint markers and stuff like that, if you try to put paint on top of it, depending on the type of paint marker you use, I highly suggest you get paint markers that are acrylics, which are hard to find. Um, I looked at Hobby Lobby for a white acrylic paint marker and I could not find one. Um, some of y'all might know more than I do because I'm, I'm making my... Um, my son's wedding. All right, so let me finish this little this little booger right here. Okay, that's better. <laughs> All right, now let me show you. You can use a pen or you can use a paintbrush. And basically, I have no design to these little lines. We're just making some little, like, kind of like some little veins. They do not have to be symmetric. I mean, if you want them to be, you can make them be that way. But I'm just making some little lines, basically. Okay. Let me try this one. I'm going to outline it. Okay. 
and then I'm going to come in and make some little just some little random kind of veiny things you can do whatever you want okay he's looking pretty cute you can even come with this little marker and you can make your little lines with the black because I want to do okay so I'm doing two things to the bee to make it look kind of hairy okay because you want that little hairy look also on the edges so I'm taking this little marker and I'm just making some little lines around the legs and stuff little bitty 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 lines on the edges and then you noticed how I went, I took the, the gold into the black. You notice, let me show y'all up close. Okay, so I took the gold, you can hardly see it, but it's there. I took the gold and I went into the black. See right here, I went this way and I made the gold come into the black. And that's gonna soften up the edges. Okay, but I'm also going to do it in the opposite direction and I'm going to make the black go into the gold just a little bit. And if you don't want to use the, um, the pen, you can do a little glaze with your black as well. And your glaze is going to make it a little more transparent. So I'm going to show you, let me just grab down here going to make it just really transparent and you can kind of comb it in right there as well just a little little bit and that's going to give you a nice soft look to where it's going to look the bee's going to look kind of um, hairy now So super fun painting. Have a lot of little techniques that you can learn to use in this one that'll um, you know help with hair and stuff like that. Now let's come back with a teeny tiny bit of white. If I can find an actual white in this little thing. And you can even glaze the white. You don't have to glaze the white, but it it just makes it a little bit more transparent and a little more shiny. And then I'm going to come right here and I'm going to make some of these little white streaks like that all the way down. I'm going to smooth that in just a little bit more. I don't want it to be just a line. So this is a really fun painting because it has a lot of little details that we've probably never practiced before, but he's super cute. What do y'all think? Oh, we're going to be done. Oh, and then we need our little, our little door to our house. So I'm going to do the door in uh, our door to our house. <laughs> I'm going to do the door in a combination. I don't want it to be solid black. I'm going to use brown and black mixed together. And this is another one of those paint brushes that are really cheap. And you can see what the paintbrush does. I want to show you. This is a this is a set of really cheap paint brushes, like extremely cheap, probably the cheapest you can buy. And I just want to show you what it does. The paint just like sticks to the sides of the brush. It does not absorb into the paintbrush. Does that make sense? And so it makes it basically kind of difficult to work with. But it works. You just have to 
you know, play with it a little bit more. And so now I have a bunch of paint all over the edge of this paintbrush because nothing gets absorbed into the paintbrush. All right, so I'm making just a little bit of a highlight on the right side to make it look like there's a little bit of a dimension to the door, you know, like you can see inside. <laughs> If you water down your white paint a little, will that work? Uh, yes, that will definitely work. You can even just use almost white by itself because are you talking about the little highlight on the B? Yeah, the little highlight on the B is just like a dry brush white paint. That's all it is. All righty, let's go to the greens. I think I'm going to have to tell this goodbye. Oh, it's a, it's almost like a bluish green. I just thought it was a beautiful addition to the painting. So we're going to use this. It's a folk art smoky jade. It's a beautiful green that has kind of like a grayish bluish green color. And I'm going to use, I'm not going to use these grandkid brushes right now. I'm going to use a better brush. Let me see. Let's go with this one. Nope, that one doesn't. Yeah, this one will work. Oh no, here's the one I want to use. This one. Okay, so this is a half inch flat master's touch. This is a pretty decent paintbrush. And I'm going to grab a bunch of this green. Folk art, y'all know, I, ha I haven't used folk art that much, but I do still like them. They have beautiful colors. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to use the, um, the side of the paintbrush to make some lines that come down on both sides. This one's going to have a couple that go like this, like this. Um, let me do one more that goes here and then I'm going to make some some uh, some leaves to go with this so the way that I'm going to make the leaves is I'm going to start here I'm going to press turn and then turn back so let me do that again I'm pressing turning just a little bit and then well I don't even need a turn just press Let's not do the turn part because I think that's going to be too complicated. So we're going to press just straight up and down, press down, and then pull back up. Put a lot of paint on your brush. See, that's the difference between those little kids' paint brushes and the good paint brushes. This paint brush is absorbing a lot of the paint in the paint brush, and that's what I need. So now I'm going to make some big, like, kind of like grass down here. I'm going to make some big ones. I'm going to make a big one right here. And another one right here. I'm just kind of filling in a bunch of areas with some leaves. You can use a, um, an angle brush. That works really well to do what I'm doing as well. You'll see what I'm doing. I'm going to make another. I don't know if I will or not. I'll have to see. So this bottom, I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of green down here to finish it off. Like some grass or something down here at the bottom. And then we're going to go into a little bit of a highlight, like a white or an off-white. And just do a little bit of um, highlights on the leaves. Same paintbrush, doing the same thing. I'm just not doing it as hard. 
And I'm just adding just a little bit of fun on all of that. You can even add it on this, like that and that. And I'm going to make this one a little bit longer. Okay, so the last and most fun part is making the flowers. So I'm going to clean that brush off and I'm going to use a violet. Let me grab my violet. Okay, so I actually have two different ones. I have a brilliant purple because I didn't see my violet up there. So I have a brilliant purple. And y'all might be wondering, why did you use purple? Why did you not use pink or blah, 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 blah? Because I went to my color wheel and I said, all right, let's look at this. Let's see. After I had this done here, I said, let me look at my, this is like a blue green here and a green. And then I was looking at that. Okay, so what color would go good with the blue green? because the background is like that blue green. And so orange, red orange would go really well. Well, I already have kind of an orange already going on in the in the picture because of you know the bee and the the beehive. So then I said, "Well, let me just go a little bit further towards the yellow orange." Let me use this side. Let me no, let me use this side. Let me go towards the yellow orange because that's kind of a yellow orange. And what is a good color that would go with the yellow orange? Well, blue violet. Okay, well, I already have blue back here. So I just kind of did a little bit of if then kind of, you know, process. And then I said, okay, well, I'm not going to do blue because there's already blue back there. So I'm just going to do purple instead and so because you know your your colors i don't know if any of that made sense but i hope it did you know your colors um you should be using colors that are complementary to um what you already have so i was looking for a complementary color that was close enough to what i was doing okay here's the paintbrush i'm going to use it is a medium-sized filbert brush and it is, filbert brushes have those rounded edges. So I'm going to grab this purple and I'm going to fill my paintbrush up with it. I'm going to kind of mix these two together. It's a really, really dark purple and a light purple. If you don't have light purple, just add white to it. Okay. And then this is the fun part. I'm just going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to just make some little swooshes like that and grab a bunch of paint and make some more. I don't know how to explain what I'm doing, so I'm just kind of doing it. So I always want to make sure I have one at the top and then two on each side. And then I just kind of follow it. Down and you can make as many or as little as you want. I'm going to make some right here. all over just make up some spots if you feel like you need like right here i feel like i need one to come through right here so i'm just going to make it up and then i'm going to come back and make a little stem to go on it afterwards okay go a little bit right there 
Mm, let's do a little bit more right here. And it's not perfect, y'all, at all. You know how I like to be messy sometimes. Well, most of the time I'm messy. Okay, so I am going to get some white. Where's my little white I had a minute ago? There it is. All right, good. Grab some white. This is actually a metallic white. That was an accident. Did not mean to do that. Oh, I'm so glad y'all like it. Um, it's a really easy painting once you get started on it. It's, I mean, I mean, it's taken us kind of a long time because it's got a lot of little details that are fun. Um, but I just picked up a metallic white. So it's going to add just a little bit of shine to my flowers. Isn't that fun? And look, I'm just coming in and I'm doing it fast because, you know, I'm just adding just a teeny, teeny bit of white on each one of my little flowers. And that really makes them pop a lot. Ta-da! Are we done? Are we done? Are we done? I think we're done. So how quick the flowers were. <laughs> Let me make a couple of little leaves right here just to have a little off balance. And then I'm going to add some white to it. 